Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter and Pinterest and a variety of other places. I also have um, a podcast which you can find in the Apple Podcast Store um, or on SoundCloud when you search Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast. Um, today I'm uh, doing this live video to share with you a little bit about how I use the nursery rhyme Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick because um, it's a super fun little rhyme and I use it for a lot of different things. And it's just sort of something that I was like, hey, I really like this, how can I use this? Um, and so I wanted to share sort of my process and some of the activities that I do with it. I, I do this one with kindergarten. Um, it, it's a great little rhyme and I actually don't start this song as a rhyme, um, I start it as a story. But if you're looking for other rhymes or inspirational things, there are a lot of places where you can find nursery rhymes. I mean, you probably know some, but in case you're like, huh, I wonder if I've forgotten some, there's some great little books. Uh, this one I have called Nursery Rhyme Songbook, um, and it's pretty hard to, to miss because it's got Humpty Dumpty on the front. Um, another one, Traditional Nursery Rhymes. I just picked both of these up. Um, I think I got this one at Half Price Books, and I think I got this one at a Goodwill or from a friend or something. You can find lots of little things in there, maybe different versions of things that you don't know or verses that have been made up or verses that have been lost and then found again. So it's cool to find books like this um, to give you a little bit of inspiration. But Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick is a pretty famous nursery rhyme. And in case you're not familiar, the version I know goes like this. Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. Jack jumped high and Jack jumped low. Jack jumped over and burned his toe. That's the basic version that I know. And it's a little more extended maybe than the one you know. Um, so I don't start this with kindergarten as a, a nursery room. I actually started as a story. And I told him, there's this little boy and his name is Jack and he was a very good jumper. In fact, he and his friends were out on the playground and they decided to um, you know, play around and jump and skip and do things that, like you do at recess. And the kids are like, oh yes, we know. <laughs> And I said, Jack was a very good jumper. And Jack loved to go and he said, guess what everyone, I can jump over that tree stump. And they said, let's see you try. And he went, run, 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 whoop, ooh. And he jumped over and he did a great job. And they said, very good job, Jack. And then Jack said, I can jump over that, um, I can jump over that uh, flower over there. I can jump over that. And they're like, oh, be careful, because you don't want to hurt the flower. And he said, I'll be fine. And he went, run, 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 whoop. And he jumped over the flower and of course I'm doing this because we're doing vocal exploration and so I'm of course giving them a little bit of that uh, vocal melodic direction sort of thing um, and then Jack decided he said I am gonna jump over that uh, that bench over there and they said oh Jack that I don't know if that's a good idea it's a pretty big bench and he said I'll be fine and he went run 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 whoop and he jumped over the bench and he did a great job and he said that was very good Jack but probably you should have jumped over that that wasn't very a very good idea and he said I'm gonna jump over now that kid over there who's tying his shoe and they said oh Jack you shouldn't jump over a, a kid that's that's not a very good idea he said I don't care I'm gonna do it and he went run 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 Woo and he jumped over the kid and they said oh Jack that was a very good jump but I don't know that you should have jumped over that kid because that wasn't a very, it was not very safe. And I, I like introducing this, it was not very safe because in a minute when we talk about candles, <laughs> it's a good lead in. Then he said, I'm gonna jump over that teacher. I'm gonna jump over the teacher who's leaning down to help somebody who's uh, scraped their knee. I'm gonna jump over that teacher. And they said, Jack, don't jump over the teacher. And he said, here I go. Run, 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 run. Woo! And he safely made it on this other side, but then, of course, the teacher saw Jack, and Jack got in trouble. He had to sit out, and it was not very fun. But they said, Jack, what were you thinking? Actually, that was not the worst that Jack had ever done. Later, Jack said, I'm going to jump over that burning candle. Oh, the kids thought that was a terrible idea because, and then we talk about what would happen if you you know, knocked over the candle, you could start something on fire, or, and the kids always come up with like hilarious reasons why you shouldn't jump over the candlestick. <laughs> I, my, in my head, I'm always like, cause you could start a fire. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I always bring that one up if they don't bring that one up. And then um, I say, and, well, let me just tell you what happened to Jack. Jack was very quick. 
He was very good at jumping. Some people even said he was nimble, and I explained sort of what nimble means. He was nimble, he was quick, he was a good jumper, but listen to what happened. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jump over the candlestick. Jack jumped high and Jack jumped low. Jack jumped over and ah, burned his toe. Ow! And so I say Jack, and here's Jack, and he's like, woohoo! And he, he burned his toe. Ow! He burned his toe. And, and the kids are giggling at this point. Oh, because he burned his toe because he was jumping over the candle because the candle was lit. It was on fire, and he was jumping over a fire. It was not very safe. And he burned his toe, and the kids are like, oh, that's a bad idea. And I say, you know what? I, I have Jack here. I have a friend. My friend Jack is here. And I pull out puppets all the time, so my friends are always visiting. But <laughs> I say, I've got Jack right here. Here he is. And I pull out my mallet. It's just a glockenspiel mallet. Um, and they're like, you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit because obviously this is not like my puppet friends. This is a little different. And so if this were a person, if this were a person, what would this part be? And the kids think about it and they're like, yes, that's his head. I'm like, yeah, that's his head. And this would be what part? And they're like, his body. And I was like, and can you see his arms coming out? And most of the kids are like, and some kids are like, no. And I was like, okay, now use your imagination. Can you see his arms now? And they're like, oh yeah, okay. And can you see his legs? Mm -hmm. Okay, Jack's gonna jump. So then I do a Jack again. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jump over the candlestick. Jack jump high and Jack jump low. And Jack jumped over and burned his toe. Ow! You know what? Jack not only jumps over kids and rocks and basketballs and things like that, Jack jumps over sometimes things that he shouldn't, like kids or teachers or candlesticks or my friend Jack decided to jump over this. And I bring out one of my glockenspiels and the kids are like, ah, <laughs> just love any time you bring out an instrument, but especially because it's shiny. It's, I have a, um, a parapole, um, xylophone. It's super, super shiny. The kids think it's awesome. They think that it's like made out of silver. So <laughs> anyway, uh, they, they're like, but like, oh no, but that's expensive. I'm like, yeah, you should, you gotta be really careful. That's why we never walk. And we can talk about that. I mean, we could, we could talk about that as, as a class. But anyway, I say, Jack, Jack did this. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. Jack jumped high. Jack jumped low. Jack jumped over and burned his toe. Oh, that didn't sound quite so good. The high part sounded good. The low part sounded great, but when he, jumped and hit his toe, that didn't sound so good. Hmm, he better try again. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. Jack jumped high. Jack jumped low. Jack jumped over and burned his toe. Oh no. And the kids are like, <gasps> you know, like they're like dying at this point. Oh no. And I say, well, you know what? With this glockenspiel, this is an instrument that has bars on it. And let me just tell you that I, I can take the bars off. I'm old enough, I'm a, a teacher can do it, an old enough student can do it. And look, the bars can come off if you're very, very careful. Of course I'm saying all this because I don't want kindergartners to take off the bars. I, for kindergarten, first grade, I do all of that. So I say, oh, an older kid can take off the bars, or you know, a teacher can take off the bars, but Jack was not very careful, and when Jack hit the bars, you saw the bars came off. Oh man, let's hope that I can put these back. Some kids, when they see something like that, they're like, it has irreparable damage and will never be fixed. And so I say, you know, we wanna be very careful with the instrument, but look, I'm able to put them back. Jack didn't do too much damage, luckily, but he should have been more careful because, you know, consequence of his actions, when he jumped, <laughs> wasn't watching, he, you know, and that, and that also is nice because then when you're talking about instruments or whatever, that's why you don't walk over the instruments because the bars can come off, whatever. So I do it again. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. Jack jumped high. Jack jumped low. 
Jack jumped over and burned his toe. And I do it again and I have him break a bar and we go through the same thing again. Um, and, and sometimes I hit hard enough so the bar comes off and I also could hit at an angle knowing that the bar will be popped off. But I do that on purpose because I want to talk a little bit about instrument care because it's sort of one of their first beginning um, activities with uh, the glockenspiel or with the barred instruments. So I'm doing that on purpose. Um, but it, in the, I do it several times. One, so they can get repetition with the poem, so they can get comfortable with the poem because eventually they're going to be saying and, and doing more of this stuff. So I go over the poem a lot. They don't care. I could play this the whole half hour and they'd be like, great. Because they like it and they like the instruments. They think it's fun. So sometimes I vary what he does. So Jack went high. Sometimes I just play the highest. Sometimes I do. Which is a fun little sound. Sometimes I do. Sometimes, I mean, you can do whatever you want. But I do bum 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 usually is the rhythm pattern. Uh, and then Jack went, Jack jump low. But I, I try and do um, bum 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 because in a second I'm going to use that again with kids. So I want to keep reinforcing that. So whether it's bum or it's or it's or whatever, I still try and do that same rhythm over and over. So um, Jack does that several times. They eat it up. Um, usually in that lesson, in that day, I'll move on to something else. Um, I do another sort of uh, instrument exploration thing with Jack and Jill went up the hill. Um, and if you're interested in that, leave a comment and I'll record another video on another day. Um, but um, Jack and Jill, so we go on to something else. Then the next time when kids come back, I say, do you remember my friend Jack? And they're like, Jack and Jill or Jack and <laughs> Um, Jack, be, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, the one who is so good at jumping, they're like, oh yeah, he made some bad choices. Which is funny because uh, a lot of my poems with kids, Wee Willy Winky, is about, uh, I make it into a story about a boy who gets out of, uh, out of his bed and runs around town and has trouble. That's another instrument exploration thing, I can uh, do a video if you're interested. Um, but there are a lot of little boys who, <laughs> who don't make such good choices. But I always use that as like, and here's the good choice, and here's what you should learn from him. I mean, that's what nursery rhymes are for, to teach uh, the moral story and the moral focus. Anyway, um, so they're like, oh yeah, Jack made some bad choices. I'm like, yeah, let's see if you can remember his poem. So we go through the thing with the little mallet. I say, I'm gonna change something this time. You know the poem really well. I'm gonna change something. See if you can listen, just listen this time. See if you can find out what's different. And I do this, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack jumped over the rhythm stick. Jack jumped high, bum 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 bum. Jack jumped low, bum 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 bum. Jack jumped over and burned his toe. Ow! What did I change that time? And they're like, oh. You didn't say candlestick. Yeah, what did I say? And sometimes they catch it and sometimes they don't. I'll usually repeat it again. But I said rhythm stick. I'm like, rhythm stick, hmm. Well, this is not a rhythm stick. Jack is not a rhythm stick. Actually, Jack is what we call a mallet. And a mallet is just a stick with a bigger part on one end. Sometimes it's a ball like this. Sometimes it's different. And then that's when I like to go to my mallets and I pull out other mallets and I'll say, you know. Well, sometimes a mallet has a, a rubber ball like this and sometimes it has yarn on one side or sometimes it has a different color yarn. Hmm, I wonder what those are for. And sometimes, well, and I actually use yellow and blue for Jack and Jill, so they might remember that. Um, and then I say, oh, or maybe it's bigger, and I call this one Tom. Tom plays the big bars, or he plays the drums, or whatever. And I say, sometimes it looks sort of like this. Oh, it looks like a marshmallow on the end. I love that, that's so much fun. These are all, these mallets have different things for different reasons, but mallets are always a stick with a larger end on one side. I know some people have mallets with two, two sided, but I don't have those, so I don't ever have to get into that. Um, but I always just say with one side that's bigger than the other. Or sometimes I say with a ball on one side, but not all of them are that way, so I don't really like to do that. And sometimes I show them like these ones where it's wooden or it's rubber or a different shape or something. I, I like showing that to kids. Anyway, so I say, so a mallet is a stick with a ball on one side, but a stick is a stick. I think I have a rhythm stick around here somewhere, and I, I pull out um, the stick and I say, wow can you spot a difference between the mallet and the rhythm stick? And we talk a little bit about that. That's just an identification thing. So that then later on I can say, go grab a mallet or we're, you know, we're gonna use our sticks or whatever. So I talk about the rhythm stick and I say, ah, oh, a rhythm stick, this is such a fun item to use. 
let me see if I can do Jack be nimble with the stick instead. Jack be nimble, and I go through the whole thing, and they, they're like, oh yeah, that's great. And I switch back to the word candlestick. You could use rhythm stick if you wanted um, to help reinforce that these are rhythm sticks. But I like to use candlestick because it's traditional. So I go back to candlestick and we do the whole thing, and I said, you know what? Usually we don't use just one rhythm stick. Usually we use two rhythm sticks. But I need to find, you know, and so then I pull out my bucket of rhythm sticks. And the kids, when they see this, they're like, oh, and they're so excited. And I say, you know, rhythm sticks, usually we use in groups of two. We do two rhythm sticks at a time. So maybe two red sticks or two green sticks or two orange sticks. And I love going through this because I don't want them to get an orange and a blue to use together. Because if kids are ever picking, they always pick one of different color or they like doing that and when you when you do that with colored sticks sometimes there's transfer of paint from one to the other and I'd like to keep them this nice in nice shape so that's just a thing because I have colored painted sticks you do whatever you want depending on what your rhythm sticks are like I also don't like the ones that are like ribbed with the um the rings all around them because they're like little mini wee rows no thanks now of kindergarten. <laughs> anyway, and so I show them the different sets and the different colors and pairs like that. And I say, you know what? There are too many different sets for me to hold in all in my hands. Maybe I could give them to you and you could use them. And they're like, oh, you know, best day ever. So, um, so I give them out to kids and I don't just say like, come pick up some sticks. Uh, that will fall apart. <laughs> you with experience in classroom settings know that's bad management. So what I like to do is I like to do a tie into their classroom and I say, I'm gonna say a letter. And if that letter is the first letter of your first name, you can come get sticks. And maybe you'll get orange, maybe you'll get green, maybe you'll get blue. Oh, I can't wait to see what you get. And that sort of takes away the like, I'm gonna ask for blue ones. Cause I, I've already said like, I don't know what you're gonna get. I can't wait until I reach in and find out. I mean, like I'm pulling at random, but it, it takes away the like, I am gonna get orange, and if I don't get orange, I'm gonna cry. Like some kids are that way. So if I preface that before they even get the sticks with, oh my gosh, you get sticks, and I can't wait to see what color you're gonna get, then I have way less of the, but I wanted pink, you know? So anyway, so I say the first letter of their first name, and I usually do vowels first, so I say if your first name starts with an A, come get sticks. And I ha I've, I'm pulling out, you know, twos, and I hand them out as they go. It's just sort of a management thing. And so every kid gets sticks, and I do A, E, I, O, U, and then I say, huh, why did I pick those letters? That was in alphabet order, and, you know, it just, it, things like that take, like, 20 seconds, but it's great reinforcement for the kids. And it's fun for them to be thinking. It keeps them thinking and keeps them on their toes. So I go through that. I go through all the alphabet after that with all the consonants. And then, um, so everyone has a stick. So I say, oh, man, these sticks are so much fun. And this whole time, of course, it's getting louder and louder. And I have taught myself to be okay with that. Because <laughs> they're kindergarten and they just want to try and they want to explore. And I don't want to squelch that at this point. So I say, oh my gosh, you're doing such great things with the sticks. Before we do Jack Be Nimble. I want to teach you a special way to hold the sticks. Take your sticks, and anytime I say the word bugs, make two antenna. And so they make the antenna, they love it. I'm like, oh, you're so good at that. Take your sticks and do cool kid pose. And they do cool kid pose, and they love that. And then I do, okay, take your sticks and do, it's gonna be hard to show you this on my phone. Do, uh, make two candles in your hand. I actually put my hands out. And I say, I look like that guy from Beauty and the Beast. What's his name? Oh, Lumiere, yeah. And, uh, you know, make your candlesticks pose. So if I say candlesticks, you make your candlesticks pose. And if I say under armor, put one stick under your arm, under armor. And so this is just ways for me, like when it gets too loud, or if a principal walks by and sticks their head and I can say, bugs, and they'll all do this. And then it'll stop the sound, but also, it gets them all to focus and pay attention. So I, I like prefacing that before we do anything else so that then when we're in the activity, if I need to stop, I've already pre-built in those command words for them to know what to do um, in different spots. I like to vary it to, you can come up with whatever you want. There are so many different, there's shoulder holders, there's, um, oh, I do microphone. I like to do unicorns sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you can do anything you want, walrus, but that gets them close to kids' mouths, so. 
but there are a lot of things you can do with them. Um, I just like to have those four, uh, the Bugs, Under Armour, Cool Kid Pose, and uh, Candlesticks. And I like them because they, for the most part, keep the sticks away from each other or in a place where they can't actually make sound. Like Walrus, they could still be like clicking or whatever. But it's good to have those set before you do anything else. So then we go on to Jack Be Nimble and I say, ah. And we've sort of prefaced it and they already know the pattern anyway. Um, you could do clapping before you do rhythm sticks if you want just so that they've got the actions in their hands before they have sound makers in their hands. But with Jack Be Nimble we do this. Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. You get a little steady beat practice there at the beginning, which is great. Then we do Jack jumped high. Jack jumped low. Jack jumped over and burned his toe. Ow! Or you could do Jack jumped over and burned his toe. Ow! As you click. Whatever you want. You can have the delayed ow or not. But um, so the, the cool thing about doing it that way is you've got a little steady beat at the beginning. You have your rhythm. Ba, 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 ba. And you've got high and low. We're talking about musical opposites. So actual high, actual low. Great. You could do high and low if you wanted. Great. You can tie that in with a vocal exploration exercise later. Um, and then at the end, you've got a little bit of waiting, which I think is, this is my, maybe my favorite part. Jack jumped over and burned his toe. And you know, there are some boys who are like, oh, I'm going to burn my, you know, like they're ready. <laughs> they're ready to do that. Ow. And so having them anticipate that is great. And it's, it's fun to do that at the end. So we do that several different times. And then after you've done it a couple times, I say, you're so good at these sticks. Can you echo my pattern? And I just do basic <laughs> click, 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 click. When I always start with that, because they like are used to that. And that's like, they, that gets them in their routine. And then I go off, of course, in different ways. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. And these, this is kindergarten, so I, the, we stay pretty basic. And then we do, you know, Under Armour, we do Bugs, or we do whatever, and then I say, you know what? Let us, we do, let's do Jack, Jack Be Nimble again, so we do it again. I say, ah, can, you, you've been doing so good with the sticks like this. Could you do Jack Be Nimble like, like this, with the sticks together, like that? Could you make a sound like that? And so we try it. Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick. Jack jumped over the candlestick. Jack jumped high. Jack jumped low. Jack jumped over and burned his toe. Ow! And sometimes they actually hit their fingers and they're like actual owls. Um, and they say, oh, that was so good. And we, you know, go through and do rhythms or whatever. And we vary it up. And uh, mostly it's things I can do to give repetition. So I'm not just like, okay, repeat that. Okay, repeat that. So I, I switch between either the poem or the rhythm repeating or the exploration of how else can we make sound. And we do a lot of things. We do tops, we do bottoms, we do all together, we do sides, we do uh, one like this. And like, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Or you could say, what other sounds can you find? Oh, they love that. I had one little girl today who was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you have fun with that. But they love doing it. It gives them a little chance for exploration um, and they get to, to do more things with rhythm sticks. So we, we go back and forth between those different activities. Usually we end up doing um, Jack Be Nimble five or six times as we're doing the rhythm sticks. Um, and then, you know, then we can put away and move on to something else. But I like being able to do that with Jack Be Nimble because um, you're doing some exploration of rhythm sticks. You're doing high and low. You're doing the poem over. You're doing the anticipatory uh, waiting at the end. Um, you're doing steady beat. You're do I mean, there's so many things you're doing. Hand-eye coordination. I mean, there's there's just so much to do with with just just rhythm sticks. You're doing repeating rhythms back and forth. I mean, awesome. But it's all sort of thematically tied in with Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Um, I, I do it again in like maybe the next lesson, and maybe they get different colors, or maybe they don't. Um, not sorry, not the same day, but maybe in the following day. Um, and so, so there's a lot of cool stuff you could do with it. Uh, you can also play around with them, like putting them on the ground, or um, if you really wanted, you could have them do duets or something where one has one stick and one has another, but I, I wouldn't go there. <laughs> so there's a lot you could do with Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick, and then go on to something else. Um, then when I'm putting away, the nice thing about having different colors of rhythm sticks is you could say, if you have blue sticks, come put away. If you have red sticks, come put away, you know, and you, 
I, I, I've learned to give kids chances to make sounds as they're like waiting or as they're doing things because that's really what they want to do. And exploring is fine and um, you, you can't make, make too much sound with these. Um, if I ever get a class that is too rambunctious, I always pull out this one rhythm stick and I say, can I show you the stick? Um, well, this is a sad story. There is one boy who got so excited with his rhythm stick and he started playing too hard. He was just slamming away and playing too hard and look what happened. Oh no. The rhythm stick started, some of the paint started to come off. We can't use this rhythm stick anymore. Okay, that is totally not true. That's a lie that I tell my students. But I mean, somebody clearly like used this on like a drum or something. But they don't know that. <laughs> so to teach them instrument care, I pull out this example of something that went wrong to sort of show, show them what happened. But I mean, you can do any sort of thing like that. If you feel like the kids are getting too loud or too out of hand, you could say like Under Armour and have them do that and then give them a story like this. Or you could say, you know, you've not been careful with the sticks and you get one more chance. And if not, if you're not careful, I'm gonna take the sticks away. And what does that mean, not careful? If you're slamming so hard, you're doing that or you know if you're not doing the rhythm of Jack B Nimble when we're supposed to do that you're gonna lose your sticks I try and give them real things like if you're slamming or if you're not doing a rhythm or you're you know hitting other people with the sticks or whatever then you'll lose the sticks and they do and they go away but but sticks are pretty easy kids my kids have done really pretty good with them if you have the colored ones great if you have just plain ones great um, I think if I had just plain like the colored dowel color, I might, um, in sets of two, take a Sharpie to the end so that then they can have some color for, if you have purple sticks, come put away, or if you have green sticks, come put away. I, I just like that as far as um, helping the flow of classroom management, but totally up to you. So it started with the glockenspiel, and it started with the exploitation of the instrument. You could come back to that later, or maybe in the following year, give them the chance to do the high and low on the glockenspiel if you want. Um, I typically don't put kids on the glockenspiel or, or on the bard percussion for this poem because there's not a lot of playing going on. You, you could, I mean, set it in a, a pentaton and have them do the steady beat and then do the high and the low, I guess. Um, there's just not as much playing as, as another poem like um, Wee Wheelie Winky, which I can explain in another video. But So I, I don't usually go back to that. I usually end with the rhythm sticks and then do exploration with other poems. But um, I think this poem is super versatile and you can use it for a lot of different things. You could act it out with a finger play. You could do, you know, a poem or a rhythm game based on it. But these are just a couple of things that I've done with Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick. If you have any other ideas, um, you know, leave a comment. I'm going to post this live video, so I'll come back to it later tonight. And if you leave a comment, I'd be happy to respond to you or have other ideas. I'd love for you to share them so other people can see them. Um, but... I'm going to come back and do a few more instrument exploration videos uh, on another day if you're interested. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, otherwise, I hope I'll see you on Instagram or Pinterest, or um, I hope you get a chance to check out my podcast, which is Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or SoundCloud or anywhere else. Um, have a great day. Thanks so much for listening.